Hello and welcome back. Today we've got the talking points for Everton Newcastle. It was pretty disgusting to watch. 4-1 loss. Um, it all capitulated right at the end. I think a lot of people are now resigned to the fact that we're going down. Um, my confidence is slowly dwindling. Usually I have a fair bit of optimism, but it's just slowly, slowly eating away at me. And to be quite honest, I, I don't have much hope left. If there's one way to describe this, I think, you know, we constantly look for the light at the end of the tunnel. But when you're not producing results, when you're playing your best or putting your best foot forward, that is a worry, that is a concern, that is basically alarming. And we dominated for the first 25 minutes today. We brought the energy, the crowd was involved, all of the above. And then to get stabbed in the chest when you concede basically when Newcastle have done nothing all game to really test you defensively, that just lowers the confidence drastically. I, I mean, there was a tweet um, by at Tactically Matt, um, and he said, basically all season, this has been the process in a game. React to the crowd, start fast, fail to do anything with the ball in the final third and repeat all season long. He just didn't include the capitulation in the second half of the of the match, but um, we don't even need to include that information. Simply put, we know the you know the calculation. You have to score goals to win games. We need to win games. The minute we try to go on the attack, we leave ourselves vulnerable. The doors left wide open for the opposition to exploit, and uh, the rest is history. And and that's what happened today. Um. The goals were a calamity, especially the ones in the second half, the way in which they were able to do it, do it with ease, especially down that side where Godfrey was sitting at right back. That was exploited all game long. You could have seen it from a mile away. You know, soccer slash football is not my first sport and I could identify it. You know, it was plain obvious. You've got to make changes. You've got to be proactive, especially in a time of year where we are frail and fragile and... One wrong move is devastating for our confidence, given the circumstances, all of those things. And and there were no reactions or adjustments or changes or nothing. Speaking about Godfrey, he was absolutely spit-roasted the other week when he was picking up Anthony, um, and today he looked equally troubled. It just seems like now we've been found out with, you know, how to get him behind that that set defensive back four that we've got going on. All you need to do is just send a diagonal ball to one of the wings and instantly you found space and instantly you're able to get a cross in. Um, and usually when the crosses come in, it's not very convincing when we try to clear it. So, you know, you as an op opposition, give yourself the best chance to score a goal when you do that. And in the Manchester United game, we got exposed there. In this game, Joel Linton was given way too much space and then, obviously, we saw with the third goal, I think it was, where Isaac just danced around everybody. I reckon he took on about six defenders in the process, not six different individuals, but six, you know, defenders. He got past every single one of them, and it was just embarrassing, really. I mean, this team is absolutely no shame. They just continue to embarrass themselves again and again and again, and that sort of is the exact same way you know, things have gone. It's a very similar nature when you talk about game after game, fans having to put up with the same shit. I mean, heck, we had the team bus, you know, as the means of commute to the, you know, the arena, the venue, and you had tons of people outside clogging the streets, showing their support, showing their pride to support the football club. Don't ask me how they still have that and possess that, but to, you know see all these fans congregating as one and then to not, you know, produce and do things of the same nature on the pitch in being together and playing as a team. There was no cohesion today. There was a lack of really anything um, outside of the first 25 minutes. As soon as that goal was kicked, that was it. Um, I think... Seamus Coleman is a bigger loss than we expected. I talked about Decore the other week being a big loss. I talked about DCL, obviously. DCL is the most obvious one, but I think Seamus Coleman is probably the most important of them all. He is the heart and soul, soul of the football club. He is the guy that 
understands the team. He's been through all sorts of shit. He's seen the team's downfall. And yet every single time he goes out there and puts his best foot forward, you know, he's, he's lacking a yard or two of pace now at his age. But every single time you see him, you know, working his backside off and playing for the shirt and understanding what it means to be an Evertonian, we lacked that today. We need that more, more than ever in these final five or so games. We did not have that on the pitch. We're lacking leadership. Do I know what the changes need to be? No, but I do know that accountability, you know, needs to be taken in order for us to be fair dinkum and actually win some football games. Because Ben Godfrey cannot be taking to the pitch. Mikalenko is very one-dimensional and his passing is crap. You've got to change things up. You know, we need goals at this point. So being on the back foot is not what not what we want. And we were doing that for 60 odd minutes and we saw the results. Michael Keane, you just need to make changes. You need to play your best. Yeri Mina, I swear to God, what does he not offer that Michael Keane does? I'll never know the answer to that either. You know, Damari Gray, you know, taking him to the bench was was all good and well because I think we needed that. But in the midfield, do we need to take out someone like an Adrissa Garner Gay for someone else like a James Garner? I'm not sure. But you can't keep running with the same shit. We say this every single week. And it's no surprise that if you pick the same bunch of blokes, they're going to produce the same results. Now, look, we wouldn't be in this predicament if we had just been more proactive sooner. Obviously, we talk about Frank Lampard getting sacked before the runner games, which we needed to win. Now, Sean Dyche is copying a lot of criticism for his team selection decisions and such. I understand that, and he is to blame for some of the shit that happens, such as not sending Godfrey to the bench such as not sending Holgate to the bench when they're clearly vulnerable and especially Holgate, he was fragile. He needed to come off because he was already on a yellow last week or last game week. That didn't happen and we saw the punishment. You know, those sort of things, that's on Deitch. But, you know, what Deitch has done and his mistakes, that's not an indictment on where we are today and the situation we're in. We wouldn't need to complain about a 4-1 result against Newcastle if we could have just won the games against Wolves, Bournemouth, Southampton, all of those teams. Those are games you need to evidently win if you're going to stay up in a relegation fight because they're all the teams around you, you know, and obviously there's going to be more difficult fixtures outside of that. So you've got to capitalise and beat the teams around you in order to get as many points as possible. We didn't do that. And now we're sitting here saying, well, we needed to beat Newcastle. And it was unacceptable that we didn't beat Newcastle. Because look, they're a better side than us. They look better. They were more consistently better. They have more quality. They looked more dangerous. All of the above. And they've got more class. I mean, some of the dribbling by those guys, especially, you know, that Isaac um, assist where he bypassed six. Now, half of that is on us. But obviously, you need to have the quality to be able to control the ball in bypassing every single opponent. And he was able to do that. So it's a two-way street in order for that to work. Those things need to coexist. You know, the opposition needs to be garbage and you need to have quality on the ball, which they have. We don't have that. Overall, the cohesion sucks. Going forward, we always look lost. The runs are always mistimed. We just lack any punch and it's just a very, very slow whimper and basically a crawl to the finish. And, and overall, I, I don't think we're getting out of this mess. And I think it could be just piling on the pain next season as well, because I don't know what the future holds beyond this season, especially if we go down. And now that's becoming a very, very harsh reality with only five games to play two of those at home Manchester City is one of those. Bournemouth is the other. How many points do I think we need to stay up? I'm not sure. Wolves and Bournemouth need to be wins. I don't have any faith we win at Molyneux. Manchester City at home is, I'm booking that in as a loss already. Somehow got the draw at Etihad. Don't know how. 
Um, and then the other two games are Leicester, which is now proving as probably the biggest game in recent history for this Everton Football Club. You know, mind you, there's been a lot of big games, but this game upcoming on Sunday night or Monday morning, I believe, if, you know, wherever you are in the world, is one of the biggest games, if not the biggest, in Everton's bid to survive. And um, slowly, you know, it's just, you know, slipping away. So I don't know what comes next. Share your thoughts. We'll see you soon. It's pretty dire times to be an Everton supporter, but, um, you know, you can't lose hope. The season's not over yet until we mathematically cannot stay up. We have hope. But that hope is really ticking, ticking down. Before you know it, it's going to be all gone. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.